Hi, it's me, Steffi. I wanted to come back and talk to you a little bit about the budgeting. Um, I started this year, the lighting in here is really bad. I started this year wanting to do a low spend year, and the year took off, and I blew it big time. Well, we had a few big expenses. We decided to change our homeowner's insurance, so we had to put a new roof on. But then, I don't know what happened, but we just, we bought a new washer and dryer, which um, was a big expense, but it's energy efficient, and we bought a five-year warranty, and in five years, I'll be able to buy a three-year warranty. And believe me, nowadays, you almost need those, because every appliance we bought, we buy a decent brand, and we've had I issues, and Best Buy has the best warranty, so luckily, we've gotten our fridge replaced three times because they had to come out so many times. I'm trying to get so I can see the screen. Um, but the good thing is also our old washer and dryer, which just needed a small repair on the washer. The dryer was fine. Went to our daughter who desperately needed a bigger set and her washer wasn't working. So it worked out good that we were able to help our kids as well. But we've been eating out too much. We've, we've not been sticking to our diet. And so I wanted to understand. I said to my husband the other day, what is wrong with this? Why can't we do this right? What is going on? So I kind of sat down and thought about it and tried to come up with why are budgets, I even wrote some notes here, why are budgets and diets both so difficult to stick to? They're both important. They both change our life for the better. When you can live on your, uh, on your income, and you can um, save money and live below your means, that gives you a better future. There's no doubt about it. If you can save money so that every month you have a little bit more money in savings, then emergencies aren't that intimidating. Because once you have, let's say, 5000 in the bank, that's going to cover most. I'm not saying all. You're, somebody's going to get on there and say no. No, but it's going to cover most emergencies. A new appliance, a repair on a car most of the time. Um, you know, if a window breaks on your house, uh, if somebody throws a ball through your window, or, you know, just all those little crazy things. And I'm not talking about manufactured emergencies like I need a new kitchen when yours is ugly but usable you know what I'm saying but saving for a new kitchen is definitely a valid way to look at savings but we all need to have at least a six months emergency fund and we used to years ago and slowly it, it went away I told my husband the other day it's not the amount of money we have it's our way of handling money that more money coming into our life will not help us if we don't get a handle on the money we have. And he agreed. So we're going to start this over for the rest of March. And, and then April 1st will be our first full month of really reining it in. We're upping our savings, our automatic savings, which we're, we've been pulling out for other things and we're not going to. Um, we still have one more roof to do. We have a rental house that our daughter rents from us. And to switch both houses over to the new insurance, we had to replace both roofs. So um, the other roof, I've got the money saved up, and that one will be done in the next couple weeks. And I'm just going to save, save, save. My husband had his yearly review, got a, a pretty decent raise, so that I keep, there we go. And that'll help, but we've got to get, so what are some of the things? And I, so I, I sat down and wrote about it. Why are budgets and diets so difficult to stay on? Well, I think a big part of it is we set unrealistic goals. You know, if you make 50000 a year, chances are you're not going to be able to save 25000 a year. You know, once you pay taxes and your bills, unless you have no bills, unless you've paid off your mortgage and you have no bills uh, and your utilities are low, most of us cannot save half of what we earn. So you need to sit down and look at your numbers, like what... And, I, and the way I do it is I start on the 1st and I write through the 30th, 28th, of course, on some months. What do our bills come to? And I write down the approximate. Like on our electricity, they do a level pay. So every month I pay the same, even though like in the winter, my electric bill is 110. In the summer, it's 350. I'm paying around, it ranges from 210 to 230. So it's right in there. Gas doesn't do that. So gas can be 30 in the summer. It used to be 20, so it has gone up. 30 in the summer, uh, you know, 200 in the winter. So you kind of have to just figure out each month 
what it's going to be for that month because I can't do an average for the year because that's too great. So every month I do a monthly budget. I write down my bills starting on the 1st through the end of the month and how much that bill will be. And it's been pretty discouraging to see how everything's going up. Our Sling TV went up. Our, our internet's getting worse and worse and costing us more and more. So we are definitely going to get on that. Problem is where we live, a lot of the ones are not available. We have T-Mobile. They have a great program. They don't service our area yet. So that is our problem. We can't get much cheaper internet. We have Spectrum, which is up to almost 95 a month, and it's really not that great a service. I won't lie to you. But we have to be more realistic. If you want to lose 100 pounds like I do, it's not going to come off in six months. Okay, yes, you hear stories of people who do that, and it, it does happen. But for most of us, I'm very metabolically screwed up. I have metabolic syndrome, diagnosed by an endocrinologist, not self-diagnosed. And it's gonna, my body fights me. So keto is the only thing I can do. I tried Weight Watchers. But my, I cannot eat all those carbs. I can't because it keeps all my addictions to carbohydrates and sugar alive. But when I go on a keto diet, I, over time, I have to give myself a few months, lose all my desire for those foods, and it gets easier to stay on it. I just have to fight through it those first few months. And this month, I did not do very good. I did good for two weeks and then had two days of bad. I've been back on for a few days, and I, can't, I told David we cannot do that again. Um, we have too much weight to lose, and if we want to go into retirement soon, we have to go in thin and healthy. We cannot retire fat with potential health risks. So that's the first thing, is we have to set realistic goals. We have to figure out what exactly our bills come to, what is our income every month from all the sources we have, whether it be one or five, deduct one from the other, and what's left over, then what do you need for food, for gasoline, and then what's left? Then you got to figure out how often do I have to register my cars? How often do I need new tires? You know, Christmas, everybody is like, oh my gosh, it's Christmas, I have no money. You guys, Christmas is not a surprise. The minute it's over, we know we have 12 months till the next one. You just have to pick the amount you want of over 12 months. Try your best to put as much away. Now, I know some people say, I don't have it. I get that. But put away something if you can. And I've been there. Most of our marriage, we were raising four kids. We didn't have an extra penny. I could no more save for Christmas than fly to the moon. So I get that. And I remember when our kids were small and there was a Colonel Sanders commercial on. And they talked about a $1.49 meal. Do you know that $1.49 meal that I could not afford bothered me way worse than not being able to buy expensive new things. That I couldn't scrape up a dollar fifty when all the kids were in school just to treat myself to a little lunch or enough to buy us each one. We were very tight back then. We lived on a lot of beans, a lot of rice, a lot of pasta, and my husband worked at a commercial bakery. We ate a lot of free bread. So you have to figure out what exactly your bills are. And then write down, how many cars do I have? When are the reg Go out and look at the windshields. When are the registrations due? Go find the old registrations from last year and figure out how much they're going to be so that you don't get a surprise. Now, our town usually sends them out a month early, so you have a month's notice because you get it like the beginning of the month before and you have till the end of the, the month it's due. And here in Texas, they're very cheap. I know in California, they're not. But you can also do an emergency fund. Like, you can save in your savings, but do a second savings that you add up all of these things. The registrations, if you're going to need tires on one car every year, uh, tune-ups, everything you're going to need. And then divide it by 12 and try to put as much toward that into this other savings as you can. And that way it's separate from your emergency savings for, uh, gee, I broke my arm, I can't go to work, and I'm not going to be able to work for a couple weeks. Some companies pay you for disability when you're off work. My husband is one of them. But some people don't get paid when they're off work for disability. So um, we need to, now unless it's your, a work, work injury. So we need to save, learn to save. I mean, I'm a work of progress too. I've got to work on this. My savings account's very hefty right now, but 8000 of it's going out to a roof very soon, which will take it way down. But I've 
got to start, both my husband and I have got to start saving. And the other thing is stop, start learning how to say no. Say no to yourself and no to your spouse. Make a deal with your spouse. Neither one of us like to tell each other no, and there's several reasons for this. Oh, I really want pizza. My husband should say, we don't need pizza. You don't need pizza. Pizza's bad for you. We don't need to eat it. But guess what? He wants pizza too. So he says, okay, let's get pizza. And then we get pizza. See what I'm saying? One of you has to be the bad guy. If your husband or wife, whoever is watching this, if it's your spouse, that is the better bad guy. Put them in charge. But somebody has to be the bad guy. And the other person has to agree not to get mad because I'm not, because I did that to my husband years ago. I said, please tell me not to eat something. And then when he did, I got mad at him and he said, I'll never do that again. So that was on me. So we have to, whether it be budget or diet, we have to figure out what we need to do and then do it. Like if you need to lose 100 pounds and you... Are doing a calorie diet which keto is not that but whatever diet figure out how that diet works and how much weight you can realistically lose can you lose one pound a week two pounds a week go with that don't count on three four five pounds a week yes if you're very overweight sometimes that will happen but those people you see in the magazines are not everybody and i know it's never worked for me I have never, even with over 100 pounds to lose, lost more than a few pounds a week. Even during those initial weeks when you're supposed to lose all that water weight, well, I guess I didn't have much water because I still only lose a couple pounds a week. So you need to figure out what's a realistic goal. You know what I'm saying? What's something that you really can do, then put it on paper, whether it be a budget or a diet, put it on paper and then stay on top of it. Get onto your budget every week, even if you get paid every other week. Get on it every week. Mark off what's come through your bank account. Make sure, I thought I had my Best Buy payment auto paid, and it didn't come out, and I had to go look, and I ended up paying a late fee because I thought I had it set on auto pay, but it wasn't. So check things. Like a day or two before they're due, a lot of companies, if you have them on auto pay, will let you know. Now, we have everything we pay on auto pay. Our car, our homes. Well, no, right now our daughter's home is not on auto pay because she pays me anywhere from the 1st through the 10th. So when she pays me, I pay it. Um, sometimes I'll pay it ahead of time, uh, but I'm trying to get the, keep that money in savings. But if she doesn't pay me by about the 10th or 11th, and sometimes that happens, I'll pay and then she pays me back. But everything else, all of our utilities, our life insurance, our car insurance, um, the few apps we have, Sling TV, um, and a couple others that we have, those uh, all come out automatically. They And a lot of people, like Susie Orman, I think is one of them, says never give people permission to take money out of your account. You know, do a push out instead of a pull. But you know what? I don't have time to micromanage all of this stuff. And yes, I could go into my bank and set them up, but I've found they take longer that way. If I set it up with my electric company, then they pull it out on its due date and I get credited on the due date, even if it doesn't come out of my bank account for two or three days. If my bank pays it and they pay it a day or two late, then it's late. So that's up to you. I don't have time or energy to monitor that. So I just pay them all automatically they just come out every month and then I go through every paid every day every week I go through and see what's come out that week I cross it off that week's budget and and see how much money's in the bank and that I'm still on track that everything's matching up and that I don't have to add any money because once in a while those crazy things like I have Amazon Prime and I also have a word blog a WordPress blog and those are yearly and sometimes I forget and this hundred dollars will come out that I wasn't expecting so that's why you have to check your bank account a few times a week and keep an eye, and I need to do better at making sure those expenses are put into the month or due, which I did do on Amazon Prime this year. I canceled the automatic payment on Amazon, Amazon Prime, then went in and paid it later. Um, but we have to be proactive. 
You're not going to lose weight or save money unless you stay on top of it, unless you have goals that you have set. And it's a, something sustainable as well. Like I said, if you want to save a bunch of money, let's say in the next year you want to save enough money to buy a house or to go on a vacation, and you have this set amount of money, figure out how much money you need and then see, can that come out of your current pay? If not, what can you do to earn money? Can you have a couple yard sales? Do you have stuff to sell on Facebook Marketplace? Are you a reseller? Are you a crafter and can sell some of your stuff online or in person somewhere. Figure out ways to come up with more and maybe shoot a little higher for savings than you can actually do, but don't set it so high that you'll be mad if you don't hit it. Say to yourself, okay, well, I make 50000 a year, so it's reasonable to save up 8000 this year, but I'm going to shoot for 10000 because I'm going to work hard to have a yard sale, find some things to resell. Um, maybe you cook or bake and people pay you to do that. Whatever you can do. There's people that do the surveys and make 50 to 100 a month. Whatever you can do to make extra, that's great. But don't overpromise yourself. Set reasonable goals and then go slightly above them. Just enough that it's a little extra but not so much that you're being totally unrealistic. Like my 100 pounds will probably take me three years very easily because my body is so metabolically messed up. I will lose maybe, a, uh, like this month, I've gone up and down. And that's the other thing. I go up, I go down, I go up, I go down. And maybe at the end of the month, I've lost two or three pounds. And that's it. Now, the longer I'm on low carb, the better I'll do. That's why I'm mad at myself for two weeks in going off. Because after three to six months, that's when it'll accelerate and I'll start seeing the weekly loss. But you know, I gave in to my stress and anxiety on a really bad day, not a bad day, a stressful day on Friday or Thursday was a very stressful day, just a lot going on. We were both really tired and we took our grandkids out for dinner that night instead of making dinner at home like we had planned. And, you know, when you take three teenage girls out to eat that are big girls and not fat, I mean, they're big eaters, that's a big bill. So with the tip and the tax and everything, that was big. And then Friday, we were so tired from the week, we went out by ourselves and ate. And we know better than that. We went to Chinese buffet. There's nothing good going to come out of Chinese buffet if you're on a diet, okay? So we, that's when I told my husband, we cannot do this anymore. I said, we cannot do this. We are being our own worst enemy right now. And this month, this year that I started so optimistically has kind of gone bloop. So I'm not waiting till April 1st to start. We started Saturday morning. Back on our plans. He's, not, he's currently on Weight Watchers till he finishes a, a challenge at work and then he's gonna start um, uh, keto with me because he has some of the same problems with carbs. So he's doing Weight Watchers, just less carbs right now. Um, and then our budget. If it goes into savings, it only comes out for what it's allotted for, like the roof will come out. And if we are saving for a particular thing, like to do my kitchen, we wanna do some work on the kitchen, then we'll save that amount. But we have to get to where we have at least three to six months emergency money in the account before we can take out for things like my kitchen reno, that's not important. My, the only thing I don't have is a dishwasher, which I have a portable one here, but I'm tired of dealing with it. So I just hand wash. It's just me and my husband. And then the babies are here during the week, but I just a bowl or two or stuff like that. I can wash it as we go. Um, my kitchen reno is not important right now. The cupboards are all there. We just got to finish painting them. I just have to wait to replace my sink base and install the dishwasher. And we need to take out a piece of wall and install our um, peninsula. But that can wait. It's not life, you know, threatening right now. More important is to have three to six months of living expenses in the bank. That's more important because this world is crazy right now. We hear all these stories, you know, trains being derailed. Well, years ago, our son worked at a place in Dallas and the train went off the tracks and luckily flipped the other way or it would have hit his building. So, or at least tapped his building, maybe knocked, knocked into the building enough to put them out of business for a while. 
My husband works at a place where trains stop every day to offload product. What if that train crashed and took out their part of their company? Now, he wouldn't be hurt, more than likely, but it could put him out of work for a short time. You know, a tornadoes come through North Texas once in a while. You just never know. I mean, things happen that are beyond our control. And if you don't have three to six months of emergency money, it can put you in a really bad place. What if you lost your job tomorrow? Maybe you'd get some severance pay or maybe you'd get unemployment, but would it be enough? So you have to figure out your risks what, how secure is your job? I mean, I know no job is completely secure, but many are more secure than others. My husband could work till he's 70, and chances are his job will be there because the plant is secure and it is the pride and joy of the company, that plant. So, and he is high enough up there after 20 years with the, the company that he's not going anywhere. So he's a lucky one that unless an act of God came through and took out the plant or there was a fire or an explosion, which can happen in any manufacturing plant, he has a job. But there's always those the little thing that something could happen, you know, you never know. He's seen other plants around him have issues. He's seen things blow up at plants around him. He's called me to say, wow, there's this plant down the street and it's on fire. So, you know, no job is completely secure. Okay, no job. So what if your car broke down tomorrow and it's not under warranty and you needed $3,000 to get your car repaired? Those are the things we need to concentrate on and think about because if we don't, we're going to end up panicked. And there's something about, I've had money in the bank and then we've lost the money in the bank because we've overspent. And that's our problem, is we we could probably have a lot of money saved right now, but we have bad habits. Neither of us were raised by families that taught us about money, and I'm not blaming our families. I'm just saying, we went into a marriage very young. Let's see, I was, well, we were 18 and 19 when we met, and I think we were 19 and 20 when we got married. And we were never taught about, both of us, you know, David grew up in a family that didn't have much money. So they didn't have money. So they didn't teach him about money. My parents had more money than his, but they, they had a lot of expenses with children that had health issues and stuff like that. My brother and sister both had a lot of health issues. I was pretty healthy, but they both had a lot of things. And my parents were constantly struggling. And so neither of them thought to teach us about money. I mean, it just wasn't done in those days that much. Some people might have learned, but neither of us did. And then, of course, most of our marriage, we struggled. We, didn't, we both worked for a while. Then when the kids came along, I couldn't work anymore because it was more for daycare than to pay for two, three, four kids. It was more for the daycare than I would have earned. I had no skills. I hadn't been to college. So David's been the bread earner. I've babysat. I've done crafts. I've done yard sales and found ways to make little bits of money. And then I've been reselling online for 20 years, making little bits. Now I'm cranking it up and trying to work more toward full-time getting a lot listed. But it takes a lot of time. I'm a one-person operation here. So to list a thousand things takes weeks, months, a year to get that many things up and then to maintain that by continually listing. My husband wants to help, but he just hasn't had time. So figure out what are my streams of income, what are possible streams of income, and what can I really do? And then make sure you put enough money for food. I think we've all done that. I'm going to live on three. Well, I've watched Coffee with Kate, and she's done that a few times. Oh, we're going to live on this much. And she ends up having to put it up to where it's more realistic. And food prices are crazy, all. I mean, David went to the, I wish I had that receipt in front of me. He went to the store the other day. He bought two six-packs of store brand toilet paper, the Scott type, but the store brand. Uh, two cartons of 18-count eggs. Um, two the big yogurts, the 30-ounce yogurts, and a box of cereal for our kids, our grandkids. It was a, a little box of, of um, Lucky Charms for, for St. Patrick's Day. Um, and it was like $48. 
It's like, what? That's a lot of money. I was shocked. Well, the eggs were like seven a piece for 18 count. The uh, yogurts were five fifty each because I, I wanted, uh, well, they were all within, a, 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 most I could have saved on those is $2, a dollar each. Um, and the, uh, what was the other thing we got? The eggs. Oh, the toilet paper has gone up $2 a package. They used to be six and change, now they're eight and change. So prices are up. So you have to keep a few receipts on hand. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm just apologizing to myself. I pulled my earring, but I was kind of apologizing to you for pulling on my ear. Um, but um, prices are going up almost weekly right now. And so we need to pay attention to that. So when you make your grocery budget, you need to pad it by maybe 5 or 10%. And the other thing that's a good thing to do is budget in just that tiny bit extra. So like if you're going to spend $50 this week on groceries, give yourself an extra five to pick up a couple items that you use every day. Like if you eat tuna, if you use mayonnaise, if you buy canned vegetables, pick up $5 worth of those items and rotate them through. But always, if you do that every week, you'll build up a little pantry, excuse me, of um, backup. Because if you can have six months of food, the non-perishable, like a few things in your freezer, non-perishable canned goods, non-perishable box goods like pastas and stuff, and then six months of emergency fund, if something happens, if you lose your job or you get injured and can't work, it's not as freaked, you're not as freaked out because you have money. And this is what happened to us when we inherited a little money when my dad passed. David lost his job and it took him four months and unemployment, he didn't get severance really, and unemployment was not enough. That extra money got us through and what kept us from panicking. But we also went out and bought a few things and resold online. And then we had a few yard sales as well. So we were very proactive during that time trying to keep money coming in other ways. Oh, we got a booth. That's what we did. We got a little booth at an antique store, and we bought things really cheap and sold them in the booth. Didn't that? I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, by the time you pay booth fees, depending on the store you're in, if you're in a really popular store, maybe. But the store I was in just it didn't. I made my booth fees, made back the money I paid on the stuff, and maybe a couple bucks, and that was it. So that six months was a waste. When it was, it ended right after he got his job, and I didn't. I got took all my stuff out. I've tried a booth a couple more times, and mm -mm. Um, no. Uh, I admire those that can make a living on a booth, but they usually have a big booth, and I was picking small booths because I didn't want to spend $200 a month, you know? But um, what else did I think of? I was talking about, uh, I was writing all about, uh, trying to figure out some things to say to you. Well, another thing is don't worry about keeping up with other people. OK, um, because here's the deal. Your cousin, your sister, your neighbor, your friend, maybe they can afford more things than you. I have a cousin. She's a doctor. She makes way more money than us. I've never been jealous of her once because I saw how hard she worked to get to where she is. So, yes, she can fly on vacations and she can take cruises and she can do expensive things and have a lot of fun. Things I'll never probably do. But she makes four times the money we do, okay? But your neighbor, you don't know what their financial situation is. They either make more money than you, they inherited money, or they're in a lot of debt. And you don't know which of those it is. And in many cases, it's a debt. Many, many people have a lot of debt. So do not ever try to compete with someone else because there's always going to be people with a lot more money than you. There's always going to be people that have more credit than you and good for them. I don't want credit. Only credit card we have is Best Buy. That's it. We don't have a single credit card, just our debit cards that have a credit card on them. So when we need a credit card, we use our debit card. The end. We were $100,000 in debt at one time between a car, a consolidation loan, credit cards. It was insane. It was like it was like 116 and we got it paid off. 
It took us a few years, but we paid it off. And the only thing we kept was Best Buy. The rest of them, gone. Cut up, destroyed, thrown away. No more. We'll never do that again because we got behind on them at one point because we did have something happen. And David got injured, couldn't work all his overtime, and our pay decreased by quite a bit. So we had to work with these credit cards to get them to take payments. And it was bad. That was many years ago. Oh, many years ago now. But we learned from that. So no more credit cards. I will never have a MasterCard. I've, I've never had a gas card. None. We have our Best Buy and our debit credit cards. That's it. So be careful with credit because as I, this is not my saying. I, it's a saying out there in the world. When you use credit, you're, you're basically spending tomorrow's money. So you're, you're mortgaging your future. So um, they word it better than me. But basically, if you go spend $500 on your credit card today, you're making tomorrow more broke. Do you understand what I'm saying? Save up the $500 and go buy that thing. The only reason we do it on Best Buy is because we get the twenty or the twenty-four months no interest, and we pay it off. Divide it by twenty-four, and we pay it off before that twenty-four months is up, and we don't pay interest on it. That is the only reason why we do it. Bought our washer and dryer that way. So, just you know, think about some of these things. I'd love to hear what your ideas are. I'm sure you guys have stuff I've never even thought of, but that's that's what I could come up with today. Um, I just know I want to do better than I'm doing, and so Saturday morning when we got up, that's what we were doing. Um, we are. Uh, other than we will be buying stuff for our business, we do have to source. And people go, if you already have so much, what? Because you continually have to look for the really. Because sometimes I can go out and buy something at a yard sale for a dollar and resell it for 30 or 40 and I might not have something that in my house. Um, I have a lot of stuff I can make 5 10 15 $20 on. But if I see a really good deal, I'm going to grab it. But I'm being careful not to come home with tons of stuff. But I will still buy for my business, but that is also a business expense. I keep notes of it and put it in the file for taxes. And it gets written off because all of my money earned online is claimed. I don't sell offline. I only sell online. Now, if I have a yard sale, that's just our stuff. That's not profit. That's getting my money back. And that is not taxable. Um, but anything I sell online is claimed. And so I keep my receipts and give them to my CPA, and he takes them off, and it, it helps out. But um, And sometimes I have to buy shipping materials, and this year I'm going to have to buy um, uh, a new printer. I'm going to buy one of those label printers that don't use ink, the heat ones, uh, Rolo, or one of those like that. I'm budgeting it, though. I'm saving in my eBay account. Until I have the money to pay for it, then I'll move it to my bank account, and I'll go order it. But I have to earn it in my uh, resale money first. I'm about a third there. Anyway, um, so just give all these things some thought. Anything, any tips you have below on things that I did not cover? Because I know I didn't cover much. I'm just trying to think of where I'm at and what I'm trying to figure out. And we'll talk more about this. But anybody that has some great advice down below or things that have worked for you, let's share with each other because we all want to learn and we all want to do better. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about a diet or finances, although this channel is more for finances, but the same thing does apply to diets if you think about it. Is it sustainable? Can you keep it up for a while? Is it something you're going to do for life because you can't go on a diet and then go off a diet? Like if we're going to be keto, we're going to be pretty much keto forever and if we occasionally have a treat, it's not going to be till all of our weight's off. And it will be probably rare, if ever, because we're going to learn to make keto treats. Uh, it's just something we've got to learn how to do. And same with the budget. Even when we end up on Social Security one day, we want to make sure that we can always save a little bit, even on Social Security, that something goes into savings. And probably my part of the Social Security is what we'll do that with. Because we already figured out that he gets his, I get half of his. If I die, he only gets his. If he dies, I only get his. So my half is only guaranteed as long as we both are alive. So we don't need to depend on that money because 
if we depend on that money and one of us goes, the other one's in a mess, right? So that's what we're planning on doing when he retires. When I get my half or third or whatever, depending on what year he retires, 62, I get less than I do at 67. That cannot be part of our budget. It can't. It cannot be part of our budget. So figure out something you can do for life, whether it be financially, budget-wise, or both, something that'll sustain you and that you can take forward for as long as you live and will serve you and always be willing to pivot a little bit. If something's not working, what isn't working? Did I not budget in enough for food? Do I need to budget in a little more? What do I need to do to get my pantry stocked up so I have that six month? Even though I'm on keto, I still have 50 pounds of pinto beans and 20 pounds of rice in my cupboard and 25 pounds of brown rice in my freezer. Because if there was an emergency, I'll eat beans and rice. That's fine. So, and then it's, I've got tons of other bags of beans because we were eating a lot of beans. Beans, lentils, split peas, I've got tons of it. When my kids need it, they come get some, although they've got tons of it too. But I'm not above eating that. And that stuff's good for 10, even 20 years, beans. They don't, I had a friend that ate out of a, she took a 20 pound bag of beans, poured it into one of those, remember how big popcorn tins used to be? She used it for over 10 years and they were just fine. She told her grandma that I said, well, don't they have expiration date? Her grandma said, beans don't have an expiration date. So we're all obsessed with, uh, uh, with the dates on stuff. Some foods are less likely to go bad than others. And from what I've been learning, canned foods are good well past their expiration date. I'm not completely comfortable with that, but I won't throw away something without at least checking it. But if you rotate and use the older stuff first, you'll never have that problem. You know what I mean? But think about all this, and I want to have further discussions about this, but we're at almost 40 minutes, so I need to let you guys go. But it's just something I want to get back. So April 1st, we'll start with the no-spend official month thing, and then starting in May, I'll report on April, and we'll go forward that way. But obviously, there's nothing to report in March. We messed up. We way overspent. And maybe at the end of the month, I'll talk about exactly what we did wrong and all that. But we still have half the month almost to make it right. So that's what we're doing. Also, have a few weeks occasionally where you use up what you have. Um, so this week, I'm not spending money on food now that he spent that 49. I'm going to try to go a week or 10 days and see how long we can go without buying anything unless we absolutely have to buy a thing. I don't want to buy anything. I want to use up some of the meat, the vegetables, some of the canned stuff what we have in the house. But anyway, let's continue this dialogue down in the comments. I would love it if you'd like this video. If you're not a subscriber, I would love it if you'd subscribe and let's have further conversations and I will be having more content. I have a couple stories I'm interested in doing, but I've got to get more information first. But I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.